What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to take a look at the Starfield content drop, uh, specifically the Creation Club. So they did come out. They did finally release the creations. They finally released the creation kit. So with that, we're going to be getting incredible amount of mods. We're going to be getting incredible mods with higher quality than we've ever seen. And to start that off, We've already had, you know, a content drop on the creations. Like I said in my other video, the creations are good for people like me who don't really want to mod the game. I don't want to go into the files of the game and mod and play around with it. Um, you know, and it's good for people on console because they'll be able to get this content and have it seamlessly put into the game, right? Because all you really need to do is click download and it loads up and you download it and it's seamlessly in the game and you can easily manage it from inside the actual game. It's very convenient. These mods are high quality and they kind of break down everything you need, you know, to know about the mod. And it will say, hey, you know, this it, they have achievements disabled. It has achievements on. It tells you if it's lore friendly. Um, it kind of breaks down all of the details with it. And uh, some of the mods are free. Some of them are paid. They are made by the community and some are made by Bethesda in collaboration with uh, community. So there are uh, a couple of different mods. I think I downloaded like four or five free ones. And some of them will have, uh, you know, their social media on it. So you can actually go and donate to these mod creators if you want to do it that way. Now, this doesn't disable regular modding. You could still go to Nexus and get all of the free mods that you want. So this shouldn't be controversial. You either want the content, pay for it, or you don't, and you take the free content. It's extra content for everybody. It's up to you whether you want it or not, right? So I'm going to go through every single creation that was dropped that are, that is currently in that market. Now... Some of them I don't like because it'll tell you if it's a cheat. You know, it'll tell you. Like I said, it'll tell you if it's a cheat or anything. I'm going to briefly go through every single mod and break it down. That way, when you get started on Starfield, once you download the update, you'll already know which mods you want. And you can see how it works and how easy it is to find and install. So this is a video more for people who are just getting started. This might be their first Bethesda game. You might just need a refresher or you might just want to check out the content because you're too busy to play right now. This video is for you. I'm going to show you every single one that is there currently. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my pre-recorded footage, obviously, because I wanted to get the content out of the way. I wanted to do it fluidly and make sure I covered everything, you know, without rushing. Sometimes when you do things live, you don't get the full you don't cover the full effect of it or the you don't cover all of the details, right? Because you're doing it live. Something might just slip over your head. You might just forget about it. So let's go see what we got going on here. I'm going to kind of go over it. So, you know, you'll start the game. And you can see we already have this armor that's added. I think that is part of the free tracker alliance thing. So that's already going to be a plus. We're going to go ahead. You're going to go here to creations. Now, after you get the update, the creations will be there. Click on creations. They're going to give you a little notice about it, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, you know what it is. It's, you know, one of those user agreement user notices. And you can see here the trackers alliance. That's an actual quest. You can see we have suits. We have all kinds of different things. Now, this looks fantastic. That's what I want to see. More weapons. I want to see the heavy guns. And that's actually going to bridge into another creation later on when we look at it. Because it's going to add heavy guns as a perk. So you can see the artwork's fantastic. Now, high quality mods, right? And I believe this one is officially from Bethesda. Because you can still get your achievements and it's part of the attract the tracker alliance quest that they add part of the dlc this i think this is like the second half of it right so of course i went ahead and i got the trackers dlc you know the add-on for that any any new content that i can get i'm gonna get right any new quest i'm going to get any new weapons or armor i'm going to get because that's the only thing this game was lacking is content here we have the we have the gravis suit and it just the details on it it looks incredible 
because let's face it, they we've had armor in the past, kind of like the Mantis armor, and it doesn't look that good, right? So I'm glad we're getting some armor skins and some actual like new armors. That's great. Now this is cool because it adds an entire quest line for mining for Argos. And it's funny because in this game, we had no, we had no, um, you know, quests for really for mining, you know, you had, uh, exploratory quest, resource quest, and there were where you, uh, what do you do? You transport miners, uh, I think miners or cargo back and forth, but this ad actually adds, you know, a module, uh, and it's going to be part of the star sim module and they're going to add more stuff later on, but you could see here, you know. It's the first module for their star sim, uh, you know, uh, content that they're coming out with this, you know, a, a taste of our continued work on complementing Starfield with an immersive space simulation. The simulation system handles anything covered by the creation, including asteroids, ships and stations. We also have included a new docking interface system on stations that allows player to interact with a brand new terminal interface rather than requiring boarding. So you could see here that this interface, you know, it saves time. And you can see here we have uh, new communication with NPCs, mission boards, unique jobs, various other features related to the creation. When starting a new game, exiting, when starting a new game, yeah, an exciting new quest is provided by Argos extra Extractors due to your current employment with them. Now this makes more sense. It's very lore friendly, right? So when being directly directed to return to the lodge, you will also have a quest pointing to the Argo space headquarters in Jemison orbit. Now this is great because anything that adds content is good for me. You know, uh, like most people, that's what I wanted to see. That's what we're getting with the creation. So those are some of the most important ones, and we're going to keep going. We have a few more to go over. Some of the other ones are going to be a bit more brief because they're not as big or have as many details. So let's keep going. And this just kind of breaks down everything I said. You know, I gave an abridged version, but this is going to have every single little thing. And we can see some of the stations, some of the things in the screenshots. Now, this is really cool here. We got some weapon skins. This is great. The drum beat already looks cool, but it's good to have these weapon skins. Like I said, anything for weapon skins is, is something we need. We need new weapons. Now, look at take a look at these graphics for a second. This This looks incredible. Now, I don't know, I don't know how anyone can say this game has bad graphics or this game doesn't look up to par. For me, I haven't seen things detailed like this on very many games. I'm talking, we, you could see the mesh in between the armor. You could see it stitched on. Every little piece of this gun is detailed. Now that's something you don't see very often. There are no discrepancies or anything wrong with the skin, right? It's applied perfectly, high quality mod. This is a must have just to make the weapons look cooler. Cooler weapons are always more, always appreciated, right? The blackout, yep. And you can see here, you could, you can enable and disable just at the drop of the hat. So, you know, when you're in there, you could click disable, enable. Here we have faster, smarter, Further, faster, smarter boost, deluxe dynamic boost packs. This is great because it adds more variety to the boost pack because some kind, sometimes traveling can seem a little bit slow. So it, it's seemingly like this mod, this creation is going to make it to where you can boost faster and boost longer with jetpack upgrades and different kind of boosts. So hopefully these boost packs add a little bit more variety to that. I am excited. I did download this, of course. So this is one of those ones that are a must have. You can see we're going through, we're seeing the different screenshots and over here it will tell you. So we have a Mark one, a Mark two and a Mark three. So each level of those are going to give you more and more advanced uh, boost pack options. And to me, this isn't cheating. And it's, you could see up here, it's, it says lore friendly to me. This isn't cheating. It just adds more to the lore more dynamics, you know, more dynamics to the gameplay to traversing 
the, you know, uh, the landscapes in the open areas because they are large. So anything that could help out with that, I'm on board with 100%. I recommend downloading this one. This is the Deluxe Dynamic Boost Packs mod or creation, I should say. That was an easy buy for me because it's 100 credits. I get more boost packs. It's lore friendly. I load it up from here, right? I load it up from there. I don't have to worry about script editing, editing files, doing nothing. Super convenient. I don't mind doing that. That's perfectly fine. I had no problem paying 100 credits for that and happily did so. Happily. And that's one of the mods I do recommend. So if you do have some credits or you want to get some credits, I would recommend getting the boost pack. That's one of the paid mods I would definitely get, especially because of how cheap it is, right? It's a very inexpensive mod. So yeah, that's what I have to say about that. That is really great mod. Um, I'm going to make a video and break down these things and I'm going to try them all out, of course. So uh, let's keep going. This one is really good because I mean, look at this adds the, uh, the HK USP 45. So we got we we have a new gun that has 45 ACP. Now, if you're familiar with HK pistols or HK guns in general, you know that their designs are kind of classic. Their designs are kind of timeless. So I can't see I can't see a time in the future where you would completely discard combustion weapons, where you could would completely discard beautiful weapons like the HK USP. I just I don't see it. I don't see. I don't, you know, so it didn't make sense that we didn't have modern weapons in Starfield. I get they wanted to create their own universe, their own type of lore. And they, you know, if they started bringing modern weapons, they'd have to do a whole arsenal. But they they should have picked some of the most important ones, like an AR-15 with mods, uh, the HKUSP, the FN SCAR. You know, let's be honest, people are still going to be using the SCAR, the, the AR-15, you know, HK pistols you know, Glock, we're still going to be using those things, you know, well into the future, because I mean, to be honest, people are still using 1911s. 1911s are still in the game. They were invented in 1900s. So we've been using those for over a hundred years and it's going to go on to 200 years. We're still going to have 1911s, right? So a little bit ran about the guns. Like I said, we could use more. This gun looks incredible. This is insane, y'all. This is like they took a picture of an HK USP and just completely superimposed it into the game. I swear that is one of the best looking guns in a game I've ever seen. I want, you know, I want to say this, this might even look better than a Call of Duty gun. Honestly, I mean, this, this kind of detail and you actually see, you know, the USP 45, obviously I don't think they can, they can brand it with the HK name, but it, it's an HK USP. And you can see we have the hammer, we have the sights. Those sights are accurate. This is the most accurate pistol I've ever seen in a game so far. Or a game that's not even about shooting or not a milsim, right? This isn't a milsim game, but that's a milsim quality pistol right there for sure, no doubt. So that's just that's just one of the things. Now, this is definitely a mod worth getting. This is paid. This is worth it. So far, we have the Gravis suit, we have the, the drum beat, the black skin, we have the deluxe dynamics, dynamic boost packs, we have the Argos mining quests and uh, add-ons, we have, you know, the Trackers Alliance add-ons. So already, we're already adding tons of content and we're just getting started, right? We're, the creations are just getting started. Now here is going to be another really awesome thing. This is going to be a neon ramen shop. Now that is pretty cool because we're going to need food now. Remember, because they did they uh, did those updates. So now we're going to actually need food. So this is going to be make more sense now than before because now because now we're actually going to need the food. So it makes sense to have this and look how good this shop looks. This shop looks really, really good. I have no doubt that this is high quality. I'm going to go through it here in a second, but we'll see it for ourselves. You know, go to Neon. It's going to make the city feel more alive. Neon's one of the coolest cities 
it feels alive, but it definitely can use more shops. So that's one of the coolest things about it, adding a ramen shop. So again, we're just adding, adding content. And this is the first batch of creations. This, this is just getting started. And you can see, you know, we have some plushies. We have some things for the house. Now I haven't really, I haven't really been into the whole house building thing, you know, um, we could go to Skyrim to Fallout. I'm not really into the base building, the, uh, you know, the house building, but I know that's a huge portion of the community do want these things. So yes, they're going to get these really cool house mods if they want to have a house. And that's going to be pretty cool for them. For me, not my cup of tea, like I said, but this is still good content, especially for those Bethesda fans that like more of the role play. They like more of the building elements, right? So this is going to be good for them. And uh, we're going to keep going here. So, yeah, I mean, this all this all looks pretty good. I mean, there's the artwork looks good. The graphics are fantastic. And, you know, it includes a lot of stuff. Now, this one I will probably use because it you it's a module you could put in space. So this one I will probably actually use because it is a module, the ancient Mariner. So, you know, become the captain of your own ancient Mariner with 22 new decor items, all craftable through decorate mode and outpost ships and housing. Visit any ship serv service technician to apply for the new module. So. It's, it sounds like you'll be able to put this anywhere, base, house, and ship. I like the module design. I like the way this is going. It just looks good all around. I mean, look at the graphics in this. It's incredible that they have such fluidity in the assets that they can make and such a good graphics, you know? The creation engine is kind of its own game development engine. I feel like they could license this out or have it have it run independently like the Unreal Engine and actually license the stuff out for creators to just make their own fully fledged games, right? Without actually just modding, they could just make their fully fledged game. This is another good content ad. This adds not a follower. I mean, not a companion, but it adds a follower. So they add this mecha right here and this is counts as a follower. Look, he's a custom follower, travel with him, along travel with him and your companion so you get to travel with both of them it has different personalities event awareness unique observations about the universe of starfield and more fun than you can shake a stick at now this one does cost 300 credits that's not a big deal for me because you're getting you're getting new content man you're getting an entire you know follower that can travel with you and add depth to the game you know, uh, that was one of the things that are that did lack in Starfield was the lack of companions or followers. But you see, we have that this time we do get that. It's only 300 credits in the Creation Club. I'm totally on board with that. I'm totally on board with that for sure. And um, I didn't purchase it because I like traveling solo. Now, it's worth mentioning that this won't affect the uh, traveling solo uh the Lone Wanderer uh, uh, perk. I forgot exactly what it's called, but it's basically like a Lone Wanderer perk. So this won't affect that, I believe, because it counts as a follower and not an actual companion. So if you did feel lonely, but you wanted to get the benefits of the Lone, you know, the Lone Wanderer perk, you could you could download this. That way, you have like somebody with you to engage with, but that doesn't get in the way of the battle and doesn't cancel out the Lone Wanderer perk, right? The traveling solo perk, you know, the antisocial introverted perk. I think it might be introverted, right? Is that what it's called in this one? I think it's introverted in Starfield. I've been playing a lot of Fallout, so I did the Lone Wanderer perk. And yeah, we have more to go, man. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff coming up in here. So you can see the mods are all put in their own category. This is good because this is basically a safe house. But the big thing about this one is that it adds new weapons and new ways to buy ammo. Now, again, this is going to make going to make the cities feel more alive, right? Because you're adding a safe house, a stash, a stealth operation safe house. 
This is perfect. And you can see here, it's going to tell you followers, gameplay, gear, homes, immersion. So it's going to have all of that included. It's going to work with all of that. Now you can see here we have, uh, you know, you have the safe house. You get two new types of, speaking of 1911s, two new types of 1911s, two new ammo types. Hopefully, cross my fingers, 10 millimeter. I haven't checked it yet. Four new throwing weapons. Uh, a firing range with respawn weapon plus ammo containers. You know, uh, robot minions you summon with grenades. A quartermaster kiosk stock up on weapons and ammo kitchen and bar with aesthetic containers, a full workshop with storage and supplies. So that's always been a big deal in this game is finding a really good location for all of your storage and supplies. And it looks like this is going to be the answer, the creations. I'm going to play that later today and we'll have a full video breakdown on all of these things. But so far, so good. This is looking fantastic. Let's keep going. We have a lot more to cover. So that's the quantum self operations that does cost some money, but it's okay because it is worth it. Now this one is skin synthetics. So it's going to add a new quest, a new location. And this is probably why I'm going to download this because we're just start for contents, right? So let's see skin synthetics, a new researchable and craftable Kim, which allows the player to manipulate the physical appearance of themselves and other com compatible humans acquirable through skin deep so it's a story-based puzzle quest and you know investigate the star station in orbit of vega one to start this quest so anything that's a quest i'm going to be on board for so yes i'm probably going to buy this too and i have i have believe me i have no problem spending money on any of the content creations it's because i enjoy it i want the extra content now if we didn't pay for this this content wouldn't be available. It's only available because people could pay for it. If we couldn't pay for it, it wouldn't exist. So if we only had free content, we'd have a lot less content. That's basically, that's my point with this, with the, with the creations and Bethesda. So you can see here, we have verified creations. The verified uh, creations are going to be things that Bethesda has verified for the most part, and you'll see the Bethesda logo on them. Now, the other thing about these are they're mostly going to be high quality. None of them should really cause problems for you. You can see you have the most, most popular for this month right over here. Now that's going to show the most popular. So here we have the Dark, Dark Star Trainers Maelstrom. Now see, something like this is gonna actually be a cheat because it gives you seven and a half times experience for all sources up to level 100, grants 20,000 carrier weight. See, I'm already out. This is basically, that's a cheat, right? That's a, that's a cheat. That's 100% a cheat, so I don't, I don't actually download these mods. And that's your choice. You don't have to download these mods. You could do the ones that you wanna do. Now this, I'm going to get because it's an environmental seal and it gives you the ability to add environmental protections to your suits. Now, the reason why I'm okay with downloading this and don't consider it cheating is because in most Fallout games, you can add lead lining, you can add asbestos, you can add things that help boost you against the environments. You can, you can uh, get poison resistance, radiation resistance, fire resistance, things like that. So this is actually, I'm actually on board with this. And there's one key element to this I'm going to show you is that to get the highest ranking, to get the highest ranking, you know, uh, protection, you actually do need to get exotic materials and you do need to use the research station. So it's not just a complete freebie. It's not just a complete freebie, but it's going to help with the new environmental damage that plays along with the settings. Like I said, these new settings are really great because it adds all of this, you know, it, it adds the dynamics and fluidity to the gameplay where you actually have to worry about hazards now. That's why I'm doing it because we do need those environmental resistances now because I did turn mine up and hopefully this is balanced. Now, if I'm playing and I'm finding it too easy to get the prototype equipment, then I'm going to, then I'm probably going to undo the mod and, you know, and just click it off. That's it. You just click it off. If something is too OP, if it's not fun, just click it off. That's all. 
These are the most popular. Remove research requirements. So that that's a cheat. That's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to use any of these, uh, you know, cheat better item level list. I'm not going to use any of these things right here. Unlimited resources, Digipix, obviously not. I did download the visible Chrono Mark watch. I do recommend getting this one because it just adds more realism. It, it adds more dynamics to the outfits. It makes the outfits look more real. It makes the world feel more lived in. So I would say, yes, this is immersive. Three star uh, weapon crafting again. That's more. That's more like cheat. Now improve. Improve flashlight. Now we definitely want improved flashlight, right? So it's kind of crazy and wild that we have all this future technology. We're grab jumping. We're in a planetary species. We have all these colonies, but we don't have LED lights. You know, we can see XP for EM knockouts. Expanded outpost containers, that's pretty cool. And you can see here, expands all outpost storage containers 10 times their normal size. I have found, actually, you know what? I did download it, I did, because you do need more storage capacity when you were doing the outpost. So yeah, I lied about that. I did actually download that one. We saw we have that. Now this is a property gravity, proper gravity wave power. This is going to no more knockdown animation, pure, proper ragdoll physics. This is a change across the entire game, but you will notice it most with this power. So basically what this mod does is it kind of it kind of beefs up the power and adds the ragdoll knockdowns, the ragdoll mechanics, because without this mod, NPCs rarely take fall damage. In fact, NPCs take almost no fall damage at all, and this actually uh, kind of compensates for that. Yeah, and you can see here. And it fixes the, you know, the existing aspects of the power. And you can see here we got rag. The portent is disabled the knockdown animations on humans, robots, and aliens. This allows for them to simply be ragdolled when they are knocked down. Not only does this look better, but it allows this power to actually force push an enemy away. So you could basically use it kind of like Jedi powers, like a force push, right? So I have no problem with that. I definitely downloaded this ASAP. I believe, uh, I think this one is a free one. Yes, this one is free. Like I said, really good free content. Now, uh, some of the modders you can donate to and things like that. This one was free, highly recommend it. There's Derek. Yep, we talked about him adding the companion. The mining conglomerate. We have the ancient area. We have poster design frames. The drum beat skin we got. Workbench filter, observatory. This is really cool again for people who like base building. I'm not that into that. So we have the overview of that. And then look, you can see here, we have the social presence. You can go ahead and follow this guy. He is Monster Cookie BD on X. Give him a follow. If you like this mod, go ahead and donate to him. Or even if you don't like mods and you just appreciate the content, you can donate to him. We have the pride stuff, you know, typical stuff. Vendor, see this, this vendor credit thing, that's more like a cheat. We don't need that because we just got those, you know, the update in 1.11 where we can increase the vendor credits. That's exactly what I did. So we don't need to actually download these cheats. This, the Galactic Junk Recycler, we do need. And the reason why that I'm getting that is because it gives us more of the quality of life, you know, uh, things that we're used to seeing in Fallout, right? And we also doubt we can see we have the Starfield community patch. Now, I didn't download that because basically I'm going to trust in the fixes that Bethesda has made so far. And I want to play the game with the current Bethesda fixes, right? So I'm going to skip that one for now. Now, this mod's kind of funny. You know, it says, shut up, Cora. Less, less chatter while flying. Now, I, I'm okay with the banter while flying. But like I said, I said I'm going to go through every single one. This is one of those ones, but I'm okay with this one, you know? Now, this is funny because this is uh, this is for uh, the bodies, body modification. So, we'll take a look at this. This is pretty funny, you know? Of course, people want to add the, you know, the thick girls. They want to have the thick clothes. So, this basically is a mod that adds thickness to the NPCs. 
that's not a very good screenshot but we can see here hold on this adds the uh the thickness where is it at let's see we have you can see we have the thickness going on here and <laughs> let's see now i'm trying to get that one screenshot there we go now that you know that's pretty visible so you know some people like having this in their games i'm okay with the way people look in starfield as it is i'm okay with the body types but you do have to admit the body types aren't as varied as they could be this isn't they they're gonna have more mods with better uh you know better body modifications but i this isn't really for me right here you know not not really my cup of tea i'm okay without that <laughs> yeah playable civilian clothing clothing now i did download this because a lot of times you'll see civilians and they'll have really cool clothing but you can never access it we're kind of limited so this does a little bit of, of a thing what fallout 76 does where it lets you craft any of kind of like civilian clothes you know at the workbench so that's going to be pretty cool So you can see like this, each civilian outfit can be crafted via the industrial workbench. And yeah, so some of these outfits look pretty cool like that. You have the colors and it works good with the hair. Richer merchants, <laughs> rich merchants, easy temples. Now, easy temples is something you might want to get because let's face it, those temples are super tedious. They're not very intuitive. And it, they're not fun, right? They're not fun. So I'm okay with doing easy temples. That's something I may or may not get. I'm totally okay with that. It is not fun to do those temples at all. So you can see here, this kind of goes over it, you know, gives you a hundred seconds. I'm just going to leave it how they meant it. I'm not going to download, you know, the different LUTs or the color filter LUTs. Uh, it's just not something that I personally want to do. I know a lot of people like changing that and get rid of, rid of those LUTs. This is kind of like what they did in ESO. They have a thing called Sky Shards. If you collect like four of them, you get a skill point. Uh, that's kind of cool because it adds more elements for exploration. It adds more reasons to explore. But for me, I think this is too easy for this game to get those. And um, you know, the Elder Scrolls Online, it was kind of a grind and they were kind of hidden. Here, you're, you, you know, you'll be able to go through and get the, you know, the sky shards, the star shards, I should say. But this doesn't feel lore accurate or lore friendly to me. If you like collecting things like the statues of Lilith, you like being a completionist, you want more things to collect. This is going to be perfect for you and it'll actually give you skill points. So it has some weight to the goals for you to accomplish. It has some weight to it, you know, so you can see it adds ESO like sky shards to the world. 15% chance or more for star shards to spawn in the landing area and gain one skill point. Rinse and repeat. Only three shards can spawn spawn on one planet. Star shards emit a beam of light, as you can see here, of course. So there's that. Now we have some more quality of life stuff, right? So this is going... Now we have some more quality of life stuff, right? So this is going to help with smarter spacesuit auto hide. Now before... When you had auto hide spacesuit, it was kind of glitchy. It kind of did weird things, right? It didn't always put things in the right place. Now it will do that. So basically what this does is it, it makes, you know, the auto hide more accurate. So if you're in a spaceship and the gravity changes, their suit doesn't just instantly pop on and off. Their suit doesn't pop on when it's not supposed to be. This just basically fixes that. It makes everything work in unison. See, so for follower, follower suit synchronization, if you are on a planet where your suit is shown and you step into a sealed area, you and your follower will only take off your helmets if you have one on. I did it this way because I felt like it was a bit too much to automatically unequip your entire space suit for these areas, since you usually only enter them for a moment or two. While exploring, however, if you manually unequip your suit in these areas, home base, they will also unequip theirs. They still have, you know, uh, so if you walk back outside without your suit on, they will put theirs back on anyway. These rules only apply to your current follower, not other NPCs. Followers will not equip a spacesuit when they are otherwise, otherwise would not. They will only equip it if it's necessary to have one in the sealed area. 
and if you also unequip yours. This mod does not use any scripts. It simply modifies the existing, existing vanilla system for showing and hiding suits and helmets. So obviously quality of life improvement, immersion improvement, this is going to greatly improve immersion and it's going to help because you'll be able to actually see your outfits more often, right? So this was this was an easy win, easy download in my in my book, so I went ahead and downloaded this. And there is going to be another one I download, improved follower behavior. So this is going to improve follower behavior so that they get in the way less. They're less likely to interfere with your combat and they just have a better eye, better AI. So this basically just gives your follower better AI. Yeah, so see while sneaking, they're going to have better AI. It's going to be they're going to match your speed while walking. They're going to match your speed while walking, while exploring planets. They may stop. They used to stop following you. They could put on the weapon and stare at alien creatures. But this behavior has been disabled. Followers will no longer stop to bully local wildlife. This fix also included in the Starfield community patch. But like I said, this is a singular issue. So I'm getting this instead of the community patch. We're going to go a little bit more in depth with some of the other ones that are coming up. These were kind of no angry companions. That's kind of funny. Now we're going to get the skills. So we have a special forces background and traits. So let's pause it here and kind of go over this one just a little bit more because this adds something I think the game was missing, some traits. So with the special forces background, you actually start with five starting skills instead of just three. Only three show, but you actually start with five. That's cool. I'm okay with that. I don't consider it cheating because it is part of the lore, as you can see. You are a special forces and as special forces are highly trained, so it only makes sense that you would get more. Now, there are also five new traits, you know, to pick, which are Special Forces Sniper, Special Forces Assaulter, Special Forces Pilot. Now, that's pretty cool because that, that we don't have too many buffs for the ship. Special Forces Commander. Now, that's good because you get extra XP. Special Forces Instructor, 30% XP, negative 15% from skills. That's kind of weird, but you get 30% boost in overall XP. So I'm probably not going to pick those because they seem a little OP to me. So it's all about what you want to do and how you want to approach it, right? So you could choose to be OP with the mods or you could choose to make it more of a vanilla experience. Now, my personal recommendation is playing this game on very, very hard or extreme combat damage because you're getting all these boosts. You're getting some buffs, some things that might not normally be in the game with the mods. You want to balance your game play out, make the game play harder. You want to add, you know, the environmental damage you want to add. You know, you want to put the combat difficulty higher, you know, either very hard or extreme because you're getting these boosts, right? So it only makes sense to balance it out. You don't want things to be too easy. At least I don't. So that's how I play. I play the game on very hard and extreme, and I find everything balances out with the mods that I use. I don't use any blatant cheats, of course. But something like this is good because, especially if you're starting a second game, you know, you should start with some extra skills because... You know, there is no new game plus where you start over, but you keep all your equipment and all of that stuff. So this could be like a fresh start where you're starting from scratch, but you're getting a boost kind of in the beginning because you're getting extra traits. And, you know, you're getting to be a special forces and kind of play with a different play style right out of the gate. Right. And you it's lore friendly and you can kind of role play as it. You know, you could be a special forces guy, which, you know, that makes sense for this. Flashlight mod, we talked about that. Uh, now this is going to be good. This is Starborn Perks and Powers. We have four new powers, four new passive skills to the Starborn skill tree. This is great. It actually adds a Starborn skill tree. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's kind of crazy in the game. We don't actually have a Starborn skill tree, skill tree after becoming one. I'm assuming that they're going to have this in Shattered Space, but why wait for that when you can have it now with Creation Club? So this was a this was an easy one for me. This was an easy grab. I did grab it. 
and you can see here you know the xbox support is experimental because a lot of these are available on xbox but i'd recommend trying it out because this looks really cool now you can see here we have an explosive beam an em beam pass a skill that increases your total power or your regeneration rate has four ranks it's safe to use with existing saves so it's going to be good because obviously once you get to level 100 120 and stuff like that you start running out of things to put skill points in this gives you a reason to keep going to keep building your character i have no problem with this i do not consider this cheating i do not consider this unfair i consider this something that should be in the base game it belongs in a vanilla game right you're starborn, you should be able to have a starborn skill tree. You should be able to level it up, especially for end game. And if you're having new game plus, new game plus, 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 10, you should be able to get the skill points to level up your starborn powers, right? So that's all good with me. The EM beam is really nice. All of the stuff and the powers are really nice. I have no problem with any of this stuff. So this was an easy download for me. And of course, I downloaded it. Good job with these icons, though. I have to say I want to give a shout out to the mod creator. These icons look very good. They look lore accurate. They look true to the game. Does it say who did it? Yes. So you can find additional information on this and you have the um, the URLs here here. And the URLs are very short, very easy to get to. So, you know, slash Starfield slash mods eight two eight five. Go there, you'll find more information about the creator. Go ahead, and I'm sure he probably, he or she probably has a donation page. And this one was free. Again, free. So yeah, I downloaded it easy. Here, we actually, we have another new perk. This is the Inquisitor, Inquisitor Arsenal perk. Now, keep in mind, this is his first creation kit upload. He has made a hundred, or she, has made 177 Starfield mods, but so far, this is rather new to him or her. And I decided to use my Arsenal perk mod as the first mod for the upload. It adds a new perk to your skill tree. Again, if we're getting to level 100, level 150, all of these levels, we should have more skills to add perks in. This is great for end game. And this is actually going to increase the magazine size for all your guns. So 10%, 20. 30, 50, pretty basic, but very helpful because ammo is a big problem in this game. There's a lot of spongy enemies and you run out of ammo and have to reload a lot. So for me, I'm probably going to only rank this up one or two because I don't want it to be too OP. Again, that's in your hands. That's under your control. What you want to do with that is, you know, up to you. Again, we can see here, this artwork is very nice. These modders are incredible. The modding community with Bethesda is incredible. Another easy dub, easy download. No question about it. I went there, I clicked that download. It was not tough for me to do. The SKK fast start new game. So a lot of us, we wanna start a new character. This is the way to do it because you can pick what starting location you want to be in. You can start from multiple different places, from multiple different points in the game, and just get started. Now, this is what a traditional Beth Bethesda game is all about, right? It's all about starting wherever you want. It's all about going wherever you want right in the beginning. You create your character, and then you're off. You're out of the sewers in Oblivion. You're out of the dungeon in Daggerfall. You're, do you're out of Doc Mitchell's house in New Vegas. You don't have to do any of those quests if you don't want to. And you can see you can start from multiple different locations. And this is kind of like Daggerfall again, because it starts you with different loadouts. Now, if you don't know in Daggerfall, depending on your background and what traits you pick, you start with different equipment. You have different loadouts in Daggerfall. This goes back to those RPG elements that go back to being immersive. So it just goes to show you that you can start anywhere you want in any city and have different options for that. That is going to be fantastic. Hold on. Let's hold on. Let's go back and take a look at that in uh, more detail. I want to take a look at those screenshots real quick. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go take a look at that. Let's go back a little bit. So let's see. 
We can start from New Atlantis Spaceport, start from the Lodge, Sedonia, Aquila, Neon, Den, start from a render exterior map marker. That's pretty crazy. You just start anywhere. And you can see we have loadouts here. So you could start with, you know, the default game loadout, Argos Miner loadout, UC Marine loadout. And this makes more sense if you're doing a role play. And it actually, you know, it can combine with the Special Forces trait. Neon Thug loadout, that's pretty cool because you could start as a Neon. You could pick Neon Rat, start out in Neon with the Neon Thug loadout. And it all adds up. And you have a custom loadout. Keep Starborn suit, suit and ship with New Game Plus. The Bridger perk, we definitely want that. We want the Bridger perk. So you could see here, you know, uh, you know that uh, by default, the Bridger unique variants do not benefit from the heavy weapons or ballistic perks, despite appearing in the perk patches for those perks. They don't benefit from that. This really takes away from the enjoyment of one of the coolest guns in the game. Now that is fixed with the correct keywords added so that the Bridger benefits from the rele relevant perk. So this fixes the Bridger perk. Does that cover all of them? I think that covers all of them. Oh, no, 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 no. We That's still not it. There's a lot of stuff. We have the Baka NPC armor drop. Now, ooh, what's a good? There's no gallery right here. I'll put myself here. Now, this mod basically enables NPCs to drop their armor in the game. Now, if you know from the Fallout franchise, from Skyrim, from Oblivion, all of the other Bethesda games, when you kill an enemy, more than likely, it drops the stuff it's holding. It drops the weapon. It drops the armor. And they, they drop what they're actually carrying. That added to the immersion. That was one of the crazy things about Bethesda games that I noticed when I first started playing them that no other game did. NPCs actually dropped the weapons and the armor actually existed on those NPCs. They were rendered and they were rendered in game and you could pick them up. This mod enables armor drops now for most NPCs in the game when they're killed. Some may use it, may be using unplayable versions of armor or may have predefined loot that will give them an extra set of armor in their inventory, but in general, should be a lot easier to find and claim armor that you'd like to wear. This is good because there are a lot of cool armor sets in this game and they are really hard to find. You can't like target farm anything, but now you can. Like in Fallout, if you want combat armor, you know you can go to the Gunrunners, you can go where the mercenaries are, right, and get the combat armor. You know where to go to get power armor, you know where to go to get these things if you want it. Raider armor, now it makes more sense. It's going to be lore friendly, and this is definitely an easy, easy dub, easy download. Again, this is one of the ones that you want to get. <laughs> And it's hard to believe we're not even done yet. This video is going on way longer than I expected, and we're not even done yet. We have, I think, one or two more really great mods. So we have extra backpacks over here. Why is extra backpacks important? Well, because, like, again, in Fallout, you could get backpack mods. You could get mods for these things. So this is actually going to add, you could get carry capacity. You could get a hazard protection. You can get emergency aid, cooldown, slightly decrease, 75 extra health. This creation will add three new backpack mods to the workbench. New research required. So it's not OP. It's not cheating. New research required. This is great. So we have really extra capacity, extra hazard protection, extra emergency aid. So in my my book, another uh, another W, another download, easy to do. And you don't have to mess with mods, mess with scripts, mess with anything. You click download, you're on, you're good. We're finally done covering it. So that's everything. And, you know, we have the plushie set they showed, the luxury homes. And I believe we covered everything here. So we just went over and covered all of the current creations, all of the current mods that are, avail that are available to download today on creations. Some are paid. The ones that are, are paid mods are actually worth it. They're a really good price. And all of the free mods are worth it, basically. And all of the ones I went over, the ones that I downloaded, the ones you might want to download. Hopefully this was informational. Hopefully this was informative to people who are new to the game or who want to check out the creations but don't have time to actually go through every single one in the game or who haven't played Starfield yet or downloaded the game. You can kind of get an idea of where the mods can take this game, what Bethesda games are all about. 
Welcome to Starfield. Welcome to Creations. Welcome to an entire new era of game modding that is made possible by the Creation Kit drop. This is going to be incredible for everyone in the gaming community. This is going to show other game developers how it's done. This is the magic of Bethesda, the magic of Starfield. I love this game. I've been a defender of it since the beginning. And now we're going to see those things come to fruition and Shattered Space also looks amazing. If you like this video, you like what I had to say, you learned some things, you like my rambling, you like going over the perks, you like that I broke everything down the way that I did. Basically, if you like the video, <laughs> go ahead, like, subscribe. And I have a 50 subscriber goal, super small channel, but we all have to start somewhere. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you next time. Thanks.